Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Yes, it's my listen. Okay, good, wonderful. So uh, we get to start um, with a class correspond for today. I mean tonight. Um, um I, I remember that yesterday, I don't know if it was me or not. Um I remember that yesterday I left an activity. So um, it was about uh, two different links. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay, did you complete that activity? Yeah. Yes, okay. So, because um, I was, well, I've been checking um, the, the WhatsApp group, but just two people complete that activity. Jamie Guiñada. So at least it's the one that sent it. Aguiñada. Aguiñada, perdón. Okay, Jamie Aguiñada. That's your last name, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, my apologies because I, I, I read, I read uh, your last name different. Okay, so uh, she's the only one. Uh, what about the rest of you? You didn't complete that activity? Los demás, Sarai, Fernando, Andrea. Uh, teacher, I forgot the page, the name of page. The web page. Yeah, I, I, I uh, shared to you the links there in, in WhatsApp. Lo voy a compartir nuevamente. But yo les compartí el, 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 los enlaces. De hecho, son dos aquí en, en el grupo de WhatsApp. Give me here. Son dos enlaces donde teníamos que trabajar esos ejercicios. Bueno, eh, los que no lo han hecho, eh, Jamie, so, um, if you complete um, those activities, well, it's okay, but in the case of Rosibel, Fernando, and, and Andrea, you must complete that activity because it's necessary you can practice uh, uh, your English. So, we're going to, well, I will give you 10 minutes in order to complete both activities, okay? Les voy a dar 10 minutitos para que completen esa actividad, porque son actividades bastante, bastante eh, sencillas, cortas, eh, que pues se pueden completar con mucha facilidad. Así que les voy a dar, um, les voy a dar 10 minutitos, ¿de acuerdo, Fernando, Andrea y Saray? Yo sé que pues este, tal vez por, por el trabajo, por el estudio. Dígame, Andrea. I'm doing it right now. Ah, ok, good, wonderful. Bien. Um, yo sé que, como les decía, yo sé que por el trabajo, el estudio, pues, cualquier motivo, pues, a veces se nos hace un poco difícil pues, practicar un poco. Entonces, vamos a utilizar esos enlaces para practicar, ¿de acuerdo? Y yes, congratulations, yes, congratulations yes. to you. Um, good for me. Ok, good. Um, Jamie Rosibel, so, because you have 10 in that activity, because you um, already did that, ok? So... We're going to start right now a las 10, perdón, a las 10, no, a las 8 con, con 18. Um, vamos a retomar las actividades correspondientes para este día. De momento, trabajen practicando en esos ejercicios, porque sí me interesa que los complete. ¿Ok? So, let's start. Sandra? Hi, teacher. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> no, don't worry. I, I just uh, want to ask you, do you complete the, the homework, the, the activity that I left yesterday? No, teacher, no pude hacerlo. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. Me so me you, ocupado, you must complete it right now. You're going to have 10 minutes in order to complete that activity. Va a tener okay. 10 minutos para completar la actividad. Okay, okay? thank you. Bien. Ahí tenemos el enlace en el grupo de WhatsApp. Ok, gracias.
Okay, guys. Uh, just wanna wanna see um, what happened with the the activity. It says uh, uh, someone uh, texts me and it says I finished the activity, but I don't know what happened and it didn't give me a result. Um, I guess we have the opportunity to um, just check for um, the the results at the end. Um, there is a button that it says scores. So in that in that place, you can see like like. Uh, how many points did you get? Did you gather in front of that from that activity? Okay, so um, you can review in that part. So there are like three different buttons, like play, cheese, and uh, scores. Silvia, veo que ya se conectó. Y ya se pudo conectar, ¿verdad? Sí, ya, ya. Ok, <risa> excelente. Tenía un virus que no me dejaba entrar. Oh, ok. <risa> Bien, lo que estamos haciendo este, eh, ahorita, no sé si usted hizo la tarea. ¿Sí hizo la tarea? No, vaya. Lo que estamos haciendo ahorita es tomando 10 minutos este, de, la, de la clase para resolver eh, los ejercicios que se supone deberíamos resolver en la, en, en la, en la tarea. Entonces, esos 10 minutos, porque sí me, inter, me interesa bastante que ustedes puedan practicar lo que aprendimos el día de ayer en esos ejercicios, ¿sí? Así que yo les di 10 minutos. Usted también va a tener 10 minutos para que pueda eh, completarlos y enviar la evidencia siempre al grupo de WhatsApp. Captura, capturas de pantalla, ¿ok? Ok. Bien, estamos. ¿Cuál? Vamos a ver. Aquí me enviaron otro mensaje. Ah, Fernando. It says, teacher, I don't understand this one. Which one? Let me just verify. Ok. Ah, Ahí lo que tiene que hacer, Fernando, es arrastrar la imagen de acuerdo a lo que le indica en la oración. Eh, lea la oración primero. Dice, on Friday, she's going to do the job. I mean, this out. So, ¿dónde debe colocar este, la palabra de esa actividad? In Friday. In Friday, yes. You just need to, to match this one, each one. I mean, um, each picture so must be in, in the specific space that is mentioned in the sentence. Okay, teacher. Uh... Pero verdad que esta actividad se reinicia cuando uno pierde. Sí, correcto. Así es. Se reinicia. Porque, bueno, en esa actividad yo no entendía qué hacer y se, y me se le terminó el tiempo. 
sí se me terminó el tiempo y decía slow. <risa> ah, ok. Vaya, este, lo que puede hacer es, siempre les tira un puntaje. Lo que puede hacer es eh, compartir ese puntaje y lo deja hasta ahí. No hay ningún problema. Ok, teacher. Eh, I try to finish this activity. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't worry. So, uh, as I said before, um, there you have the web page so you can visit uh, each uh, exercise, each model. Um, and if you want to practice, if you want to learn, so you are free to do it. Because that's, uh, that's a free material for learning English. So, uh, you have those resources there. And all links that I shared to you, you can visit it uh, later if you want. So, in order to practice. No necesariamente este, están disponibles solo para la clase. Esos están, son recursos gratuitos a los que nosotros podemos tener acceso siempre. Así que luego lo puede eh, trabajar si gusta. No hay ningún problema. Ok, teacher. Thank you. Ok. Ok, I guess uh, for once that... Uh, let me just verify. Once that start since the beginning... Yes. You are about to, to finish, right? Para los que iniciaron desde el principio, creo que ya están cerca de, de terminar, pero. Um, let me just verify.
Okay, um, the, I guess you're finishing that activity because I'm seeing uh, some screenshots there in, in the, the WhatsApp group. So um, we're going to move on to the next um, lesson um, on JT. So we're going to see one of the topic that we must complete here in the platform of English Corporativo. Um, we're going to check um, some videos and also going to uh, study uh, some things related to those videos too. Um, and after that, I will share to you a link that this is a different game. So it's, it's called Sushi Spell, uh, where you're going to work um, on it. So, um, but it's going to be later after uh, reviewing the information that we have here in the, in the platform. Okay, so just let me uh, show, show up my, my, my screen. Okay, there we have. So um, this is the last topic. The, the ones that we were discussing yesterday was the time contrast. Then it uses our simple past. Um, uh, yeah, simple, I mean, uh, past, present, and future. Uh, and, and the uses of each uh, form of the verb, right? So this is the exercise I wanna be working on. Uh, and now we're gonna be working on this lesson of yet. So just take a look um, and it says, in this class, uh, you will notice and practice intonation and statements beginning with the time phrase. Uh, also, at the end of the class, you will be you will have I mean a time to practice a, and personal life phrases using different tenses. So this is the aim for this um, for this lesson of objective. Um, let's see. Um, oh, let's watch I mean the video first. Um, it says pronunciation. Intonation in statements with time phrases. Let's uh, watch what is this about. Pay attention, please, because we want to discuss later using this topic. Ready to work on pronunciation? Notice the intonation in these statements beginning with a time phrase. Pronunciation. Intonation in statements with time phrases. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice the intonation in these statements beginning with a time phrase. In the past, very few people used computers. Today, people use computers all the time. In the future, there will be a computer in every home. Can you now complete these statements with your own information? Read the statements to your teacher. As a child, I used to. Two years ago, I. In five years, I. Intonation. El micrófono, teacher. <laughs> statements with time phrases. Okay, okay. My apologies for that because I was talking, 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 but I was mute. Thank you for letting me know that. Okay. Um, and since the beginning, right? Uh, okay. Um, I was talking that in this kind of um, sentences, uh, this, this kind of statements, we have two different type of intonations. Um, the, the first one is called rising intonation, and the other one is called falling intonation. Um, when we talk about rising and falling intonations, um, when I see that, like the the how we pronounce, how we uh, say statements, uh, gonna fall or gonna rise, that's depending on the expressions I wanna use. In the case of the ten expressions, always gonna be like rising intonations, like uh, in the past, so today, in the future. If you notice the the, the, the form that I say those um, those phrases, it's like um, a, like 
when you um, have the volume of your television, right? So when you um, give like more uh, or emphasize more to, in, in the last uh, words, on last letters, in, in case if it is just a, a one word, but in case there are like two different words, four or more than that. So you're gonna emphasize in the last word. So in the past, Today, in the case of today, it's just the, the last syllable. Today, so it's going to be rising. Um, in the future, in the future, so the last word going to be like, uh, or it's going to have like more emphasis because the pronunciation is in that way. Um, then we're going to see that the rest of the sentence that we're going to use as a, as a complement of, of these kind of sentences are um, going to be in following intonation. It's like, going down if, if we pretty like or if we uh, use it like the, 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 the comparison to, between um, this, this kind of sentence with television so gonna down uh, the volume of or intonation like the, the, the way we say it, those words like uh, very few people use computers very few people use computers I don't know if you noticed the difference in the past very few people use computers. So it's like uh, doing this, this, this kind of thing. I'm gonna use the annotate here in order to um, just create a, a graphic design of how it's supposed that we pronounce those words, uh, I mean, those phrases in these sentences. Just, just take a look here, uh, like this one. Okay, when I say in the past, very few people, use computers so it's gonna be like if we create like a graphic design about how we uh pronounce those um those words gonna be like that so when i uh, get up okay or boys at the beginning then it's going to be uh, falling okay in the past very few people use computers so do you notice the difference between using rising and, and falling intonation you see the difference? Yes? No? Fernando? Hey, I don't can the in I don't can see the intonation. You, you can see the intonation. Okay, well <laughs> um we must listen the intonation of of, of the pronunciation of those words. Like Uh, cuando nosotros hacemos uso este, de expresiones de, de tiempo, como las que tenemos aquí, nuestra entonación, si ustedes observan, en la última palabra o en la última sílaba, esta tiende a ser un poco más fuerte, más, digamos, golpeada eh, a la hora de pronunciarlo. In the past, ok, today, in, um, in the future, so I'm exaggerating uh, like the pronunciation of those words, but it's, it's kind of like that. Estoy como exagerando un poco este, la, la pronunciación de, de, de esas frases eh, solamente para hacer énfasis en las palabras donde se supone debería ir una mayor fuerza de voz. ¿sí? Leamos la primera palabra. Leanla ustedes. No, no, no es necesario que este, abran el micrófono. Leanla ustedes. ¿Dónde escuchan la mayor fuerza de voz en la primera palabra? Expresión, se los voy a eh, encerrar quizás por aquí. Um, vamos a ver, vamos a ver. ¿Dónde está? Aquí está. Veamos. Esta expresión, solamente esta. Díganme, ¿dónde encuentran ustedes la mayor fuerza de voz? En past. Ok, en past. Y en el caso de today, ¿dónde encuentran la mayor fuerza de voz? In day. In day. In day. Y en day. el caso de day. in the future, ¿dónde encuentran la mayor fuerza de voz? To. Future. Future. Ok, future, right? Last word. Future. Ajá, en la última palabra. Vean, a esa entonación, a ese énfasis que se le hace a la última palabra, en este caso, de, en, en estas expresiones de tiempo, es lo que se le conoce como rising intonation, ¿sí? Ese es un rising intonation, o sea, estamos aumentando nosotros eh, la entonación 
de esas palabras. La pronunciación, cómo nosotros decimos en, en sí o, o pronunciamos en sí esas palabras. Ahora, lo opuesto a un rising intonation es un falling. ¿sí? El falling eh, tiene que ver con la caída que nosotros le damos o, 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 o el volumen que nosotros, vaya, para ser un poco más claro, es el volumen que nosotros le damos eh, a la pronunciación de ciertas palabras en el caso del complemento de las oraciones que utilizamos con las expresiones de tiempo. Yo utilizo la, um, esta gráfica que tengo, que tengo por acá como para identificar dónde va la mayor fuerza de voz, dónde la pronunciación es un poco más plana y dónde cae la entonación. Entonces, en este caso, yo puedo decir in the past, ok, very few people use computers. No sé si se nota dónde sube y dónde baja con esta gráfica. Sí, teacher, se, se, se nota. Se nota cuando, digamos, en una palabra la entonación en esta sílaba es este, más grande que en la, en la otra. Sí, es como que se focaliza más la, la, la pronunciación en ella, ¿verdad? Yes. Ahora, en la otra es lo contrario. Tendemos a disminuir este, la fuerza de voz en ella. Sí, a eso se le conoce como un falling intonation o entonación en caída. ¿sí? Bien, quedamos claros con esto. Yes, teacher, uh, but uh, what is the name of this intonation and... Ah, okay. Intonation a, I'm going to write it here. I'm going to write it here. For okay. instance, the first one is rising intonation. I'm going to say like this. Rising intonation. Okay. I'm going to change the color of this one. I'm going to use green one. Okay, this is rising intonation. And this one is falling. Falling intonation. Rising intonation, falling intonation. Ahí tienen los nombres de cada uno. Thank you, teacher, uh, because I, I will study this topic, rising intonation and falling intonation. Okay, wonderful. So you're going to find a lot of information there, mostly. It's going to be helpful also for your pronunciation, because when you manage this kind of uh, uh, topics, like when we're going to rise or, or, or voice, we're going to fold or voice. So it's going to be easier for us to identify or you, make use, the make or make use of Uh, the words when talking about uh, any topic or when talking about with someone else. I mean, in a conversation, right? Um, okay, so we're going to move on to the next topic. So I guess there are just a few uh, contents that we must discuss about this. Um, these sections. Uh, let me just clear um, all drawings. Okay. Here and here. Part A. Okay, let's move on um, to the next lesson of yet. <clears throat> This is, uh, okay, you just pay attention here to the um, lesson of yet. And it says in this class, you will listen to an audio. I'm sorry for <laughs> audio there, because must be writing in a different way. It's audio, no audio, uh, like word where? The, the, the way that is written there. It's audio. And make the exercise. As you listen, you will develop skill in listening for main ideas. So that's what we're going to do here in this, um, in this activity. So let's pay attention to the listening active, listening exercise. For better or for worse. So this is just an expression and it's also the topic for this activity. Let's read, uh, let's read the instruction and it says, listen to people discuss changes in their neighborhoods. Check the topics each person talk about. So that's what we're going to do right now. Listen to people discuss changes in the neighborhood. Check the topic each person talks about. Okay, so 
let's pay attention. Then we're gonna be identified like, for instance, the woman, what it says, um, the man, what it says, the woman, number three, what it says, and that's all. Let's listen. I guess there are just three different uh, conversations here. Pay attention. Guess I'm sharing. Yes, I, I guess I'm sharing the audio. Yes, I'm sharing the audio. Yes. Listen to people discuss changes. Check the topic each person talks about. 1. How long have you been living here? Oh, for over 20 years. And have you noticed a lot of changes during that time? Oh, yes, quite a few. This is a much nicer place to live now than it used to be. It's much greener. When I first moved here, there weren't many trees around. But over the last few years, the city has planted trees everywhere. It's made such a difference. Two. How do you like living here? Well, it's an interesting city, but you really need a car here. Otherwise, you can't go anywhere. There used to be a good bus system, but there isn't anymore. Why is that? Oh, I think they expect everyone to have a car, so they don't bother to provide decent bus service. It's getting worse and worse. These days, you have to wait for ages for a bus. And when one finally shows up, it's usually full. 3. I can't believe how much this neighborhood has changed. What do you mean? Well, when Joe and I first bought this house, that was almost 20 years ago, of course, there were lots of young couples with children living on this street. I don't see any kids out today. That's because they've all grown up and moved out of their parents' houses. Just about the only young children we see around here these days are the grandchildren when they come to visit. It's a shame. I miss the sounds of kids playing. It's gotten way too quiet around here. Page 60. Exercise 5. Part B. Listen again. Write down the change and if things are better or worse now. 1. How long have you been living here? Oh, for over 20 years. And have you noticed a lot of changes during that time? Oh, yes, quite a few. This is a much nicer place to live now than it used to be. It's much greener. When I first moved here, there weren't many trees around. But over the last few years, the city has planted trees everywhere. It's made such a difference. 2. How do you like living here? Well, it's an interesting city, but you really need a car here. Otherwise, you can't go anywhere. There used to be a good bus system, but there isn't anymore. Why is that? Oh, I think they expect everyone to have a car, so they don't bother to provide decent bus service. It's getting worse and worse. These days, you have to wait for ages for a bus, and when one finally shows up, it's usually full. 3. I can't believe how much this neighborhood has changed. What do you mean? Well, when Joe and I first bought this house, that was almost 20 years ago, of course, there were lots of young couples with children living on this street. I don't see any kids out today. That's because they've all grown up and moved out of their parents' houses. Just about the only young children we see around here these days are the grandchildren when they come to visit. It's a shame. I miss the sounds of kids playing. It's gotten way too quiet around here. Okay, there we are. So um, those are three different conversations that we're gonna use for completing this activity. So um, in uh, 4.8, uh, there we have a woman, the first one. Um, what are changes that uh, the woman sees um, in, in, in their neighborhood? In I mean, her neighborhood. It is uh, about population, transportation, families, environments, cities, or shopping. What do you think? This is about the first conversation because mm -hmm. there are three different ones in, in, in the truck. I don't know, it's family. 
Families, okay, wanna choose families. What about the second one? Wanna check if, if it is the, the, the correct answer. If not, just let me know. Okay, the number two, men. What are the changes? Population, transportation, families, environment, cities, or shopping? Transportation. Can I say transportation? Okay, let's gonna see that later. And the last one, it is, is it about population, transportation, families, families environment, cities, mm -hmm. families, okay. Okay, let, mm -hmm. let's review you the information. What, what, are you sure about the, the first one? No? <laughs> Um, maybe cities because maybe cities uh, they were killing right. many trees cities because were many um because it, she says that there were many trees oh okay wanna see wanna see if the fears teacher the fears transport is in environment environment yes yeah, because uh, if you notice here in the in the audio, it's talking all about uh, things that has changed, like uh, the environment, trees, and things like. Uh, she said the last expressions like everything was greener, so like like emphasizing that she is talking about uh, that uh, when she was living there, there were a lot of trees or gardens here. So let's review. There you have. So that means that all answers that you gave me are correct. So we have a three, three points. Uh, if you haven't solved this exercise yet, sir, there you have the answer. You, you can complete it now. Um, let's move on to the next one, uh, to the next lesson of yet. In this one, it says, um, by the end of this class, you will learn how to use conditional sentences with if clause, okay? Um, do you know what is conditional? Have you ever listened about conditional sentences? Well, that's a condition to mm -hmm. read, but I can read that. Mm -hmm. Okay, when we talk about condition uh, or conditional sentences, we're talking about uh, different situations that can happen, like possible situations that we have if uh, we talk about something specific last, uh, as, um, the consequences of something uh, we define like, for instance, if this uh, happens, so that's mean this is going to happen, uh, something like that. We can define a, a, the conditional sentence like, si se cumple esto, esto puede pasar. So we want to say that uh, in conditional uh, sentences, we have that uh, like different categories. We we'll start seeing uh, zero conditional, first conditional, second conditional, third conditional. There's an, a specific one. For instance, if we use zero conditional, that's mean uh, that we're talking about things that are 100% true, or uh, we're talking about facts that are uh, that's, that are going to happen if, if we say in that way. For instance, I remember a sentence uh, some time ago that it says like, uh, if you um, like, let, let me let me just uh, try to remember that sentence. Okay, this one. If you uh, um, boil water, okay, it reaches. Uh, no, I mean, if water reaches one hundred degrees, it boils. Okay, that, that's the, the, the correct structure for that sentence. It, if water reaches uh, 100 degrees, it boils. So this is an interesting fact because it, it doesn't matter what happened. If I reach 100 degrees, the water is gonna boil. It doesn't matter what happened because this is a, a, like a scientific fact. So I, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Existen como diferentes eh, tipos de condicionales. Eh, uno de ellos, de los que recuerdo, es el cero condicional. Eh, cada uno tiene su propósito. En el cero condicional eh, se utilizan este, como eh, información eh, que es, digamos, 100% comprobada. En ese sentido... Si nosotros vamos a hablar, o, o mejor dicho, si, si, si nosotros vamos a hablar del, del cero condicional, 
es porque nuestra situación, la cual vamos a exponer, va a tener un resultado que siempre eh, va a suceder sin importar, este, sin importar si, si esa condición um, se cumple. Les ponía el ejemplo en español. Si el agua alcanza los 100 grados, ¿qué creen que pasa? No. Comienza a hervir. Muy bien. Ok. Si los bebés tienen hambre, ¿qué pasa? They cry. They cry. Ok. Son cosas ya definidas. O sea, mi, mi, mi situación, el, 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 digamos, la, la situación posible que se puede dar va a tener una consecuencia que este, ya está definida. Únicamente aplica para el cero condicional, porque no hay otra alternativa, ¿sí? Si el agua alcanza a los 100 grados, lo que va a pasar es que va a, a hervir. No hay otra, otra opción en ella. Es eso o es eso, ¿sí? Pero únicamente aplica para el cero condicional. Ahora, so, the structure for this uh, conditional sentence, for zero conditional sentence, um, gonna be like um, the use of if, as a conditional if, plus... Simple present plus a, a comma, because must be separated by a comma, and then when I use another simple present tense. Okay, so it's gonna be like this one. Let me just use the, the, the whiteboard in order to uh, give you some examples using zero conditional. I'm gonna write it down here. Like zero conditional. Okay, there you have. So, must use if this is going to be your conditional. This is the one that's going to be used in always. Simple present, going to be your tense. This is one that we use for this kind of conditional simple present. Plus a comma, because must be separated by a comma, plus another simple present, simple present tense. Okay, take a look. There you have, if plus simple present, plus comma, plus simple present tense, period at the end, okay? So if we think in an example like this one, um, let me just think another example. Uh, Let me just think about it. Okay, this one. If Okay, look at this one. If snakes are scared, they buy. So this is 100% true because this is what happened. So there are no other options there. If they are scared, they buy it. Um, now, when I use this, some, some, when I retake some examples that we were using previously, like for instance, uh, if babies, are hungry, comma, they cry, period. If babies are hungry, they cry. So we have two different sentences there, two different examples using zero conditional. Now, let's uh, just review this information because uh, this is no like um, the, the order um, or like, the only order that I want to use for this kind of sentences. There are uh, two different orders. For instance, uh, we're going to use the condition and the result. Um, so in that way, first condition, then result. But it's possible to use the result at the beginning. And then when I use 
the conditions. So is it possible to use it in, that, in, in both ways? The only thing that we're not taking, uh, take care of here is the uses of the noun and the pronouns. For instance, if in the, in the second one, in the second example that we, have, that we have there, it says, if babies are hungry, they cry. So is it possible to say, babies cry if they are hungry? What are we doing there? Well, well just, just changing like the pronouns in, in, in the composition of this sentence. We are like flipping, like using the, the results at the beginning, then the condition. So it's gonna be, a, or yes, it's gonna be in this way if we change it. Just let me move this example here and wanna write it down this way. Simple present tense. Okay, in this case, we're not going to use comma because it is used, it, the comma is used if we use the condition at the beginning. But if we use the result at the beginning, it's not necessary because this sentence is going to be separated by the conditional word. In this case, it's if. So it's going to be simple present tense plus if plus simple present. This way, okay. So, uh, look at this example here. Okay, there. I'm gonna use in this different ways. Uh, if plus simple present plus comma plus simple present tense. This is the first one. The first one. The, the first use of when I like, like. I mean, the, the first formula when I use for constructing this kind of sentence. The second one's gonna be like simple present tense plus if plus simple present. How does it work? Okay, if I move this one here, I'm gonna change the, the color of this. Uh, I'm gonna use green, I guess. Green, it's okay. It's not possible to use green. Okay, let me try now. There, okay. Uh, this is, if babies are hungry, they cry. If snakes are scared, they bite. If I use these two different sentences, in the second uh, form, it's gonna be like, babies cry if they are hungry, period. So, or the second one is gonna be like, snakes bite if they are scared. You don't use subcomma, right? Hmm? Comma. Hola? La coma ya no se utiliza. La coma no se utiliza, correcto. La coma no se utiliza. ¿Por qué no se utiliza la coma? Porque la oración está siendo separada por el, la palabra condicional, que en este caso es if. ¿Qué significa if? Sí. Sí, pero en condicional. Ahora, no, no confundamos este, esta palabra con el if, de, el, el yes, de, 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 porque muchas veces se puede dar cuando escribimos una, una oración o, o por lo menos si traducimos una, una oración condicional del español al inglés, a veces los traductores nos, nos, nos aparecen con la palabra yes, porque escribimos sí nosotros. Pero eh, hay, en inglés hay tres, este, tres sí diferentes, ¿ok? Tres palabras que significan sí. El, el sí de afirmación, que es yes. El sí de condicional, que es if. Y el sí, que es um, de opciones, que en este caso es whether. ¿Ok? Tres sí diferentes, con propósitos diferentes. En español es un poco más confuso, porque los tres se escriben de la misma manera, se pronuncian de la misma manera. ¿Sí? Y se utilizan en, 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 en los tres, eh, las tres formas que, que yo les estoy mostrando ahorita. Eh, eh, afirmación, condicional, opciones. ¿Sí? O opciones múltiples. ¿Cómo se escribe el de opciones? Eh, whether. Um, de esa manera. Déjenme. Aquí. It's for choices. Ok. 
aquí está. Ahí está. Weather. Eh, eh, se, la pronunciación es un poco similar a la palabra weather de, de, de clima, pero esta es, significa sí. Sí. Okay. Weather. Sí. Uh, un ejemplo con el weather uh, para, para ver este un poco. Um, en contexto, la palabra podría ser. Uh, denme, permítanme pensar en un. Ah, ok, ya tengo una. Uh, he seems undecided whether to go or stay at home. Ok. He seems undecided. Ok. Whether to go or stay at home. Ahí tenemos una oración utilizando el weather. El weather hace como, como el, el expresa como este, opciones o, o alternativas entre ellas. ¿Sí? Eh, teacher, ¿a dónde escribió esa palabra? Weather. Weather, a, aquí en la, en la pizarra. Eh, está, se lo voy a sombrear, permítame. Vamos a colocar aquí varias. Muy bien. Ahí está, mire. ¿No lo ve en su ah, teléfono? Yes, yes, I, I can see, I... Ajá, aquí está. Sí, sí. es que no veía esta palabra porque estaba muy, con, con mucho zoom. Ah, ya, ya, vale, pero ahí, la, ahí lo tiene. Zoom. Ajá. <ríe> ahí bueno. lo tiene. Ese es el otro sí que se utiliza ah. en inglés. Es, es el de choices. Ajá, y se pronuncia casi igual, de weather, clima. Sí, correcto. Weather, weather. Es, weather la pronunciación es un poco similar. Sí. Ajá, son casi similares. Sí, sí, sí. De hecho, este, fonéticamente eh, comparten este, su pronunciación. Weather, weather. Weather, bueno, un poco, ¿verdad? Bien. ¿Preguntas hasta este punto? No. Eh, no for me, teacher, is clear if, is conditional, yes, is, sí, este, sería un sí. Un afirmativo. Rotundo. Uh -huh. Afirmativo. Un afirmativo. afirmativo. And whether, whether is, eh, un sí for, for choices. For choices. For choices or alternatives. Alternative. Ajá. Uh -huh. Para, para, este, para opciones o, o alternativas. Ah, por ejemplo, eh, whether take. Eh, this por ejemplo, real... en, en español, le voy a poner un ejemplo en español, este, uh -huh. para, para que se comprenda este, un poco más. Eh, si yo digo, por ejemplo, eh, estoy indeciso si ir a la fiesta con mis amigos o con mi familia. ¿Sí? Estoy dando dos, dos alternativas. ¿sí? Estoy indeciso si ¿sí? ir a la fiesta con mis amigos o con mi familia. So, when I say, like, for instance, in, in, in English, you're going to be like, I'm on the side about go to the party. Uh, no, I mean, I'm on the side whether go to the party with my friends or my family. Whether, it's going to be the, the, el sí en español, ¿verdad? The, the choices or alternatives. Bien, preguntas. Veo que ya se nos pasó el tiempo. Ya tenemos siete minutos sí, sí, extra. Claro. <ríe> Está interesante, ¿verdad? El uso de, 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 los, de los tres sí diferentes. Bien, nos vamos a quedar hasta aquí. El día de mañana vamos a ahondar un poquito más en, en el uso de los condicionales. Vamos a ver la información que tenemos en la plataforma este, y vamos a eh, trabajar con ella. Ah, ahorita, pues, eh, solamente pues, desearles una feliz noche. Cuídense, bendiciones y nos vemos. Mañana. Siempre a la misma hora, 8 de la noche. Thank you, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Blessing for all of you. Bye bye. Una última pregunta. ¿Es verdad que mañana no hay clases? Eh, sí, no, si sí, mañana tenemos clases. Mañana eh, viernes hay clases siempre a las 8. Ah, eh. But the calendar, the calendar, eh, 
it right. looks a little bit different, right? Yes, because uh, if you remember the last Thursday, uh, it was in the, I guess, the, yeah, let me just verify. Yes, it was the last, the last week. We didn't attend to classes. Si, si recuerda la, la última, el último jueves, la, la semana pasada, no tuvimos clase. ¿sí? Entonces, la reposición de esa clase va a ser el día de mañana. Ah, ah, ah. yes, I, I understood. Okay, good. Good teacher. Okay, <laughs> bye bye. Good night. Bye, good night.